Good morning, this is Mother Mantis, and I'm back with another video after quite a long pause. But this morning, the embargo lifts on the reviews for the new Dragon Age game, The Veil vale Guard. I'm very interested in that, and I thought I would come on for a few minutes, take a look at the reviews, and then kind of have a reaction to those. I have not done any content on Dragon Age for quite a while now because, frankly, I just have not known what to say. <laughs> There's so much division and so much negativity on the one hand and then so much absolute, like, fandom on the other side that I don't think that the, I don't think that the major fans can see criticism objectively and I don't think the people that are hating on it can see the good points objectively. And so I just... I just felt like I had to step out of that fray altogether. So I am going to take a look at, though, at the uh, reviews that are coming out this morning, and then I'll be back shortly. See you soon. Okay, well, that was interesting. Uh, it seems to be very divisive. Skill Up hates it. Mortismal Gaming loves it. Both reviewers that I normally follow and whose opinions I really like. And they're not usually in complete opposition to each other either. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Matty hated it. Eurogamer loved it. Mortismal Gaming, as I said, loved it. Not only loved it, but said possible game of the year contender. Let's see. IGN loved it. That's not a big surprise. They like every game that first comes out. Kayla Elizabeth liked it. But I will be honest and say that her review was interesting to me because she really liked it. I know that she's a real fan of the game, but I felt like her the to general tone of her review came off sounding like somebody who really wants to love the game and is determined to see it with the most kind eyes possible. That might be just me, but that's the impression her review gave. So we'll see. Very interesting morning. It really is just uh, goes back to the argument that maybe they shouldn't be giving out these review codes and maybe we should just let players make up their own minds. Maybe we should each be making up our own minds. <laughs> this is just reaffirming my decisions about why I basically stayed out of this fray over the last month and why I have not done any content on Dragon Age, even though I keep talking about doing content on the game uh, and I keep wanting to do content on the game. I mean, The Veil vale Guard is a direct sequel to Dragon Age Inquisition, and yet they made some decisions with The Veil vale Guard that I find puzzling. The most puzzling of which is that uh, decision to only bring forward three consequential, if you want to call them consequential, decisions from Inquisition, being, you know, who you romanced, who you made the divine, and I can't remember the third one, but none of them are the really big decisions. They're just sort of the personal decisions. I'm still excited for the game. I do have some concerns with the game that I don't think have been assuaged by even the good reviews I saw this morning with. I'm as I said, not super happy with the fact that only three choices are being carried over, although I think I understand why, and I'll get back to that in a second. I've heard that the companions are immortal and are really not dismissible. I don't like that. I think it flies in the face of what the Dragon Age story does, but I think I understand it in the context of uh, a more linear story that they're trying to tell, and so they need each companion. You can't have a companion disappear early in the game if you're telling a linear story, and you need that companion in the game later on. Okay, they're immortal, and they can't be dismissed. So that impacts the level of relationship you can develop with them. Um, I've also heard that you can only play as a good guy, quote unquote, good guy in this game. Although, to be honest, most of us play as good guys. So to me, that's not particularly consequential, but it does impact your ability to role play. And I think I understand that you're playing as Rook and Rook is their own companion. Excuse me, Rook is their own character. You are not taking on Rook as yourself. Like, for instance, one of my friends uh, that I play with sometimes, um, she was saying that she just finished playing Forspoken. And she was saying that you play as Frey. And she said that you don't, you become Frey, you're playing Frey's story, like you're playing the Witcher story, you're not, you don't take Frey on as you don't become Frey. I think that's probably going to be the same in this game. In in Inquisition, I was the Inquisitor, that character, I was the Inquisitor. I think in this game, Rook is the main character. I'm simply playing Rook's story. That's, I think, going to be a difference between this game and Inquisition. 
Uh, and I also don't like stylistically, I'm not in love with the kind of a light fantasy big heads kind of a look of the game, but that's a stylistic choice. I can live with that. It's what's popular now, apparently fine. I'm definitely going to be playing the game when it first comes out. Uh, I might stream it, but I'm not sure I see the point in that because I think probably a million people are going to be streaming it and probably everybody that I know that might watch my stream is also going to be playing the game. But I'm definitely going to put it up on my channel as a Let's Play just because that's what I do. Um, because I have not been waiting 10 years for this game to not play it when it first comes out. What it boils down to for me is the concerns I have about the game have not been alleviated. However, I'm what I would consider a lore nerd. I have over 3,000 hours across the games in this franchise. I love the game. Um, it seems clear to me that this game is aimed at newcomers to the franchise uh, and more casual players, which is uh, not what I had hoped for. It's not the vision I had for the game, but nobody hired me to make the game. So that's, you know, that's just something I have to accept. I think that's going to bother people like me who are really deeply into the story, but I also understand why they're doing it. I'm not going to hate on it for that. As long as the lore is there and they're true to it, then I'm, I'm going to be okay with that. What I'm hoping is that people love the story enough, the newcomers, that they love the story enough that they're willing to go back and play the older games, even though they're older and the gameplay might be clunky, blah, 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 because the stories are so good that they're worth it, because they are worth it. As long as as they stick the ending of this game, as long as they have an ending that is consequential and impactful and does justice and dignity to the story that they've told all this time, I think I can be happy with that. And I have heard from now several different sources that they did do that, that the last five or six hours of the game is very consequential. There's some really meaty and big decisions that are made and, and that those uh, decisions, the way the game wraps up is very, very satisfying for people who are really into the story. And if all of that proves to be true, then I think I'm probably going to like this game and I can accept the game for what it is. That's really all I have to say about Dragon Age, with everybody being nasty about the game and back and forth thing. And I just don't think it's worth it, honestly. I mean, we're all grown ups here. I've got way more important things in my life than whether a game has too much purple or whether it's stuck to the dark fantasy theory. I'm really looking forward to playing it. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about my feelings about it. I hope you feel the same way. And uh, I look forward to talking to you guys about the game pretty soon. And with all of that said, enjoy your day and I'll see you soon.